We gather for worship on this third Wednesday in Lent, gathered to celebrate the community of neighbors in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call us into human communities to serve and be served by one another. Open our hearts to the needs of all your neighbors and teach us to recognize the gifts that you have given each of us to use in service to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our gospel text tonight comes from the second chapter of Mark. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that Jesus was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in the front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to God. Be to God. On this text, it is rooted in a story that is one of discovery, one of opportunity for Jesus to, to proclaim the power of healing that God has given him. And this is one of my favorite of all the texts. In fact, you may recall at my um, welcome that the call committee prepared for me before you all entered a time of voting to call me as your senior pastor, um, I shared a Bible study. And this was the passage that I shared. It's so important to me because this was the passage that was shared at my maternal grandfather's funeral. He had strayed away from a life of faith but the pastor who preached his funeral, the pastor that I was privileged to have as part of my call story, reminded us that it was others who carried him to faith. We know the power of God at work in this text, the ability for this paralytic to be healed, to stand up and walk. But tonight in this Lenten season, as we recognize the gift of community and tonight the gift of neighbors, the reason that we focus on this text is because we recognize that Jesus was only able to do what he did in this story because others brought this paralytic man to Jesus. And it wasn't an easy task. First, as you know, carrying any full-size adult is hard. And so for four to pick up a mat and to walk that distance, only to find that when they get to the place where Jesus is, that it's so crowded, so packed, there's no way that they're going to get through the door. As you know about architecture at that time in the world, buildings were often crafted in a way that had thatch on top of mud, on top of wood and beams, and roofs were a little bit more um, malleable or movable than what we may picture today. But they made the effort to get the man onto the roof and then to open a hole in the roof and lower the man down to Jesus. That's a lot of effort for anybody to undergo. But Jesus saw the power of that effort at work. He saw the gift that the neighbors were sharing in. And he used this opportunity to not only forgive sins, but to give healing. This is early in the story of the Gospel of Mark. And it's a reminder of what Jesus will do throughout the whole Gospel. 
shock people and help them to come to see God's glory by doing things that no human ever could. This past Sunday, I preached on the Ten Commandments, and I wanted to focus on understanding those commandments as a gift of relationship, not specific rules, but rather a whole paradigm, a whole space in which we're called to live as God's people. Another way of looking at those Ten Commandments is a gift to engage with neighbor, to speak well of them, to care for them, to provide life any way that they can. And that's what we see in this gospel text, four men who live out that call to love neighbor, words that Jesus repeats time and time again, and to bring that man to a gift of healing. I pray that in our Lenten discipline, in this time of reflection, that we ponder and think about in the week to come, what it means to be a neighbor, what it means to pick up a mat and to exert an effort on behalf of our neighbor, what it means to move literal earth in order for that neighbor to see Jesus and to know the healing power that Jesus brings. Or maybe to look and see how other neighbors are doing that for us. Maybe not neighbors that we know by name, maybe not neighbors that we even know where they live, but the gift of neighbors and that call to care and love for one another. The gift of neighbors is strong in this text, and it's rooted in God reminding us that there is always work to be done. So let us continue to be mindful of that and hear Jesus' call to love our neighbor in a new way. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 So, as we do each week in our story, we use this time of prayer for a time of interactive prayer. And so tonight I have some prompts about neighbors and prayers for our neighbors. So I'm gonna ask four different prompts tonight and we'll do one by one, but here they are. We'll pray for our neighbors who we know by name, who we appreciate. We'll pray for our neighborhood businesses and community organizations. We'll pray for our neighbors who we ignore or forget and we'll pray for our neighbors in need. So I'll invite you to share with me names of people or organizations or examples of how we can lift those up in each of these categories here. First, would you share with me some of our neighbors who we appreciate? Joseph. I don't know who Joseph is. That's okay, that's all I need. Oh, okay. That's, that's fine. I'll say Dominique and Karen. Okay. They're my renters. There you go. <laughs> Jenny. I'll say uh, Judy. I'll say Jenny okay. and Becky, my neighbor. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> I lift up my neighbor, Frances, who is uh, a single person and always has extra room in her trash and recycling bins when we run out of space in our <laughs> Good Thank you. How about neighborhood businesses and community organizations? We sit next to the Urban League. Yes, of course. And also to Mass General Store. Sure. We certainly remember all the local restaurants that have suffered through the pandemic. Most certainly. Louie's Market that's been there when I needed something quickly. There you go. The new bakery on Renolda Road. Oh, that's a raving one. Somebody brought that in the other day. Bobby, boy. Yeah. I think just our grocery stores, we see the same people and appreciate them. Well, time and the time again. This may be another cat of the children's home down the hill. From the sure. Road. Amen. <laughs> Bosnor. What'd you say, Ruth? Cross North. Cross North. Yeah. yeah, of course, Cross North, yeah. I mean, it's more than the children's home. It's a oh, it's a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, right, right. How about our neighbors who we ignore or forget? The Someone's... Say again, Barbara? 
Now, I was going to say, and Ruth was picking up, I was thinking of the men that are people that I encounter at Five Points. Like the paper uh, sellers and all that? Well, or those that are in need with their yeah. signs. I'd lift up those in public housing. Others who we all those neighbors who help the homeless. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, how about our neighbors in need? Cindy, uh, who's on the corner of Barbara and Buena Vista, who has brain cancer. Mm -hmm. I think all of our neighbors who have a need for our shelter ministry, even in a different way this year, mm -hmm. those experiencing homelessness. Jester, who needs a stimulus check. Mm -hmm. So. Those who come with hunger to Christ beloved. Yes. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I think we should remember all of the people that have gotten to the border wanting to get into the U.S. and the real crisis that is developing there. Yep. Um, I think neighbors who don't know that help is available. Thank you. All right, let's take a few moments to go to the Lord in prayer. And as always, you're welcome to reply to each petition with <laughs> hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have called us to love our neighbor. And tonight we give you thanks for the gift of neighbors. We lift up to you our neighbors who we appreciate by name for Joseph, Dominique, Karen, Jenny, Judy, Benny, Becky, Francis, and all those who we see each day in our lives and give thanks for. We lift up to you our neighborhood businesses and community organizations, the Urban League, Mass General Store and downtown retailers, local restaurants, Louis Market, the new bakery, grocery stores, Crossnor, and all the places where your work is done. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we lift up to you our neighbors who we ignore or forget. Those who share their needs with their signs. Those in public housing. Those who lack adequate housing. Those who help but aren't recognized those who long for safe childcare. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we lift up to you our neighbors in need, for Vinia, for the shelter ministry and those experiencing homelessness, for those who face such economic uncertainty and long for stimulus and support, for those who need food pantries, from neighbors from other countries who are unable to enter, from neighbors who don't know that help is available. Send your spirit to guide us to love and care for neighbors in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remind us of Jesus' healing power that we see in the world and continue to not only bless doctors and nurses, technicians, and all those trained in the gift of medicine, but all those who support them as well in environmental services, in delivery capabilities and security and all the things that hospitals and medical centers need to run each day. May Jesus' healing hand be at work in each who gives their life to care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Embolden our faith to cut a hole in the roof for our neighbors, to do what needs to be done, to be willing to go out and boldly proclaim your love in the world. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Send your spirit to help us learn from our neighbors who bring different gifts to community, those who might not look or talk or worship like us, but those who still belong in our place together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with all those who struggle and suffer this day, knowing that you hear their prayers even when they don't have the words to speak them. Guide us in our time of heart and sustain us in the promise that you are with us and that your hope is sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear God's blessing. The creator who fashions us together with all things. The Christ who leads us into a new beloved community. The spirit who holds us in the communion of saints. One God bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Peace. Thanks. 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 Thanks.